I know a lot of directors who have been in the industry for many, many years who, well, let me rephrase. They want to be directors. They fantasize like myself. They grew up and they saw uh, Back to the Future or Jurassic Park as kids and, and went, ah, oh, that's what I want to do. I want to create that. And now they're in editing for reality television or shooting wedding videos and not doing what they dreamed. You have to get experience directing. And if you were to ask yourself, how many hours have you actually spent directing? Like beyond, not, this is not on set. This is not on set as a PA or editing or even writing. How many hours have you spent actually directing? How many hours would that actually be? That is so vital because when you get your shot, when someone does open that door for you, you better hit the ground running and know exactly how to do it. Well, it's kind of a maddening thing to think about, right? Oh, I don't have any experience directing. How do I do that? Well. You don't always need a camera. One of the things that I tried that really transformed a lot of what I do is um, I wanted to get better at working with actors. So I invited a couple of actors to my studio. I gave them a scene from a play. I had no cameras and no lights and I just had the two of them reading the screen scene to each other, act out the scene, and I tried to see if I could get them to a better, more connected performance. That's it. And it's important to say that this was not a scene I wrote. This is just a scene out of a play that the actors just got on the spot, reading through it, do the scene together, and it's so awkward and so hard for the, just the actors. Okay, I'm seeing the awkwardness. I'm seeing the fact that they're trying to read the lines and remember what to say. I'm seeing that they're not connecting. How can I make them connect? How do I do that? It is terrifying. It it. I would have massive anxiety before each time I would have them come over to try it. Um, but it changed everything for me because now, because that's directing, that's sitting there in the chair for hours. All right, actors, try holding hands and see if that helps connect you more or sinking them into their environment, painting pictures for them. Imagine you're, the, you're having a picnic on a blanket right now and there's a storm cloud coming and the rain pellets are just starting to fall. Like feel the rain, smell how the ground is feeling and now action and see what happens. This is all directing and I would say that if you don't have any hours doing it, this is one way that you can increase the amount of work that you're doing. So it's so important and you have to, you have to be very uh, relentless about it constantly finding like if you find that you're in this been in this business for more than i don't know six eight years and you've got one short under your belt it's you, you it's time to step it up and figure out a way to get something else done um another thing that i've done that's helped me is um i had a shoot once where it was just a little corporate thing the shoot was on a friday we had a little grip truck of grip and lighting stuff in the truck. Well, I couldn't return the truck until Monday. So that weekend, I took uh, the truck with the camera that I'd rented. And on a Saturday, we just went and got a couple actors. And I wanted to experiment with some intimate, like a love story. Now, I'd never tried that before. I'd never done like a love scene. I didn't know how to do it even. But I got some actors that I trusted and they trusted me. And we just tried stuff and just... I mean like a, two, a couple falling in love and just what, how to shoot intimacy, you know, and just create this beautiful little love story. We didn't even have audio. We just had visuals. It's on, the, it's on my reel. It's just like as something that we played with and tried, it's, it's putting work out there. That is super important uh, because when the window comes, and it will, there will come a time when someone decides to give you a shot. You got to have something to show them. You got to have you know, some sort of real, they have to believe in you somehow. So <laughs> hopefully you're not trying to scramble the night before to put something together. Like this is how you do it. Um, another way to be working is you have to, you have to aggressively expand your network. Now that 
people hear that and they think the word networking. And that is what I mean, but that's not totally what I mean. I, I think it would, the better way to phrase it would be making more friends. Um, usually when people think about expanding their network, they think about going to a networking event, which I think is one of the worst places. <laughs> I mean, that can be great, but it's one of the hardest places to actually network, actually build your network. I think one of the a really good places is actually a film festival. And the key to things like festivals, screenings, things like that is not just meeting someone at an event, it's following up. So uh, my the feature I just shot, um, the reason, one of the big, the first things that got going as far as got, got that feature off the ground was me meeting the screenwriter at the Austin Film Festival. And the only reason that I ever even got the screenplay from him, so his name is Dwayne Worrell, he was speaking on a panel. So I'm just an audience member. I didn't even have a project in the festival. I was just there to attend, to meet people, to do exactly what I'm talking about, to aggressively expand my friend network. Dwayne spoke on this panel because he had written, uh, it was an award-winning film through Amazon called The Wall. Uh, John Cena's in it. Um, Aaron, J, uh, Jason Aaron, Aaron Taylor Johnson, guy from Kick-Ass, I'm blanking on his name. He's Quicksilver. Anyway, directed by Doug Lyman, who did The Born Identity and Mr. and Mrs. Smith. So, wow, Dwayne, wow, he wrote this? Wow, what a guy. So, you know, I'm super intimidated, but I go up and I introduce myself and, you know, we, we hit it off okay. But I made sure to get his contact information so that I could follow up with him later, which we did once we both got back to LA, which is one of the reasons to live in LA because a lot of people live here. Anyway, so we went out to dinner and that was where it was really important to just be a person, not a desperate <laughs> you're so great, Dwayne. I want to work with you. It was just, what do we have in common? He likes sports. Uh, he like, you know, he likes sci-fi action. We just kind of bonded over common interests, and we became good friends. And then it was when we had this connection. Then he sent me the script for the abandon, and when I read it, it was like, wow, this is the best script I've ever read. Th then I took that script, went to another film festival. And I met a couple of producers. From the, I did the same thing, same exact thing. Met them, saw that they had made a couple of films that were lower budget. After the festival was over, I followed up. Said, hey, would you like to go to coffee sometime? We could chat about whatever. Can made a connection, hung out with the guy. Said, you know, I just came across this script that I really liked, passed it to him. He read it and said, let's do it. Let's make a project. All of that came about because of just aggressively making sure I was constantly meeting people. Um, I will put on task lists each week to meet more industry people. Usually it's by a month. Like this month, I need to meet three new people, make three new friends. Uh, and I would say I don't limit it to has to be a producer or an agent. Um, it could be anybody in the industry, really, because you just don't know who. <laughs> Ironically, I, I made a friend in a writing class that I'm in. This is a super nice guy. It's really humble, soft-spoken guy. And he, I, le I learned he just moved to LA. So I was like, oh, he just moved to LA? He's a director like me. He's a writer-director guy. and just, just seemed like a nice guy, and I kind of felt bad for him. Like, oh, you probably don't know anybody in LA. You want to grab a coffee sometime? Yeah, sure. So we went out to coffee, me and my wife, and just hung out with him for a bit. I'm like, what does your wife do? Oh, you know, she's an actress. I'm like, oh, yeah. I think I said something like, trying to make it in the big time, huh? Ooh. And I'm like, well, man, it'd be fun to hang out with all of you. know, Maybe we'll go on a double date or whatever. You know, just being friends, just, again, expanding the network. Being friends, making connections, growing the thing. I said, you know what? We're having a cookout at my place. You want to come over? Like you, you know, you're new to town. You probably don't know anybody. Come on out, meet some friends. It'd be great to have you. He shows up, and his wife <laughs> gets out of the car, and she is like very a very known Golden Globe winning actress. And I'm just like. 
he, he, I had no idea who his wife, like it was, it's hilarious thinking about it, but it all came about because of this constant push to continue to make more friends, grow the network, because that is how jobs get made. People, the jobs that rarely don't happen because of the meeting, they happen because you're hanging out at someone's birthday party and we're like, dude, you know what? I've got this idea for a comedy horror. We should, you wanna do it? We should do it. Like that happens all of the time, all the time. That's how you get things made is by having all these friends. If the only friends that you have are your mom and just your couple of buddies you went to film school with, you're, it's going to be a lot more difficult for you to actually get past where you are. You have to push beyond that boundary. What about um, nepotism, though? We we hear, uh, we see in the comments, we hear from people, you know, all the time that you really can't get any meaningful work mm -hmm. unless you're related to someone. I have heard that myself. Um, nepotism is a real thing. Um, especially if you live in a big hub city like LA, New York, um, and you're competing against Kevin Costner's kids, you know, or whatever, or Spielberg's son who wants to, whatever, you're, that is the reality, that's who you're dealing with. Well, I think it's really easy to fall back on that excuse and say, well, I can't because I'm not anyone's son. I grew up far away from Hollywood. Now, I'm not directing Marvel films at the moment, but that doesn't mean I'm not working, right? So you, it, it, your future and your career is something you have to grab a hold of. We can make a thousand excuses all day long about the reasons why we're not making it. Um, if that's what you're doing with your creative time, then that's probably why you're not making it. Yes, good for them, you know. Steven Spielberg's son, I don't even know his name, but good for that guy. Like he's got a connection and a good end. Well, then maybe you should become friends with someone like that. You know, maybe you should find a way to make, invent your own nepotism, you know, like become best friends with a showrunner if you can, you know, like that's how, because look, to be honest, like I would function the same way. We like to like, throw the blame on this, oh, it's all politics and it's all who you know. Yeah, and I do the same thing. When I hire a project and I need a DP, who do you think I'm gonna call? Do I call some demo reel that I've seen online of a DP I've never met or am I gonna call, you know, Sally who I know is awesome and she's super talented and we've worked, that's who I'm gonna call because that's how we're all like that, right? We all want to work with our friends and we all want to have this solid team of people. So it goes back to just making sure that you are connected to the right people. I mean, that's really, it, it sounds simple, but that's really, and rather than um, making excuses as to, oh, I'm not connected to anyone, I'm not so-and-so's relative, I, I think that's just an excuse to not go out and actually do the scary work of becoming friends with, you know, these people. My personal humble opinion, <laughs> but. So when you've been to networking events, it's it's kind of reminds me of like, you know, these like singles dances yeah. back in like the 80s and 90s that I would hear people go to and, you know, like, okay, hey, I'm here to meet someone and there's like this weird desperation and awkwardness. Whereas if you're at a film festival or taking a writing class, you're engaged in something else. Mm -hmm. And then if naturally something happens or you approach somebody that's a speaker, it just, it seems like there's just a different way. There's less pressure maybe. Yeah, the nice thing of it, yeah, because networking events, and I'm, I'm not saying never go because there there is value in them, but it is exactly like that. It's speed dating. It, and it's generally you, everyone is coming up to each other going, how can you advance my career? <laughs> it's a very self-centered way to meet people. It's I mean, imagine if you were trying to date somebody and you were going, I'm really looking for a wife or a husband. I mean, the... <laughs> the other person is going to be like, uh, sure. Slow down there, cowboy. Like, right. I don't even know your name. Right. Like, what do you do, Jason? That's right. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. yeah it's, and I'm looking at your watch and the car you're driving. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Yeah, you know, if I'm, and it happens, you know, and I'm not even like anybody. And if people find out I'm a director and then they're an actor, 
oh, you're a director? Like you could just feel the energy of like this. Uh, it's a it's a hard place because everyone is essentially feeling the same way. Now, and if I were in that same plane, I've got actors coming at me from this way, but I look over there and there's a an investor. <laughs> well, now that's you doing oh, it. Oh, yeah. hey, you want to make a movie? You know, it's sure. that same. I mean, it's human nature, yeah. It is human. So, I think finding I think in the, if you are at the networking event, there is a positive way to go about it, and I think that would be to try to remove the desperation from it. Go to the event without the mindset of I have to get a job. Just like you wouldn't go on a date saying, I have to find a partner. It just puts so much pressure on this precious little connection that you're trying to make. If you just remove that from the equation and just say, I'd like to just make a friend. That is so much easier. Because, you know, oddly enough, some of the best connections I've made at things like that are usually someone like the, the person that's serving the hors d'oeuvres, you know? <laughs> Like hit it off with so and so, and we're like, isn't this whole thing such a crock? I'm like, I know, man. People come down here; they're so desperate. Ah ha ha! What do you do? Oh, I'm, you know, my name's Johnny, and I I'm a DP, and I actually just I'm just doing this for extra work. What? You are no way, you know. And then all of a sudden, you're friends. Ah, oh, it's so much easier to do that, do it that way, to take the pressure off this desperation. Ah. Oh. But a film festival or writing class, those are great because the focus is not on you as much. It's on either their film or your film or writing class is a good one because it's like you're focusing on a craft of like getting better. You're meeting other people also with similar goals. They're all there to improve their craft and, and driving towards this direction, not this direction. I mean, yes, we're all trying to make it, but we're all looking this way and you just happen to be looking at the person next to you and you're just kind of becoming this, making a bond that way. So there, it's a much easier way to make friends and to, to build a team.